Hello everyone and welcome back. This video is on continuous random variables. Hopefully you've seen discrete already, but if you haven't, don't worry, we're going to do a quick recap. But the focus for this video is on describing variables that can take an infinite number of values in a given range, which comes with a new set of challenges. So we'll start by looking at how we define the probability distribution of a continuous random variable and the important details that go along with that. Then we'll take a break and when we come back, we'll look at a famous type of continuous random variable, a uniform random variable, before looking at how we're able to estimate the probabilities associated with continuous random variables. After that, we'll wrap up with a summary. Sound good? Let's get into it. So quickly as we're getting started, let's firstly recap the two types of random variables. Discrete random variables, where x can take a finite number of outcomes, and continuous random variables, where there's an infinite number of outcomes. For discrete random variables, we use what's called a probability mass function to explain the probability of particular outcomes. We can directly express the probability, p, that our random variable, big X, would equal a particular value, say little x. And we can represent this graphically. Now for continuous random variables, we have a problem. We can't actually do this because for a continuous random variable, the probability that it equals a particular value x is zero. That is, the probability that big X is equal to little x is zero. This is because we can always measure more accurately for continuous random variables than any number that we specify. For example, what's the probability that a leaf is five centimeters long? Well, no leaf is precisely five centimeters long. It could be 5.011111, could be 4.99999. But because there's an infinite number of possibilities the length could be, the probability of it being exactly five is zero. That means we can't specify the probability that our continuous random variable equals a particular value. So what do we do? We start to think in terms of intervals, because while the probability that x equals 5 is 0, the probability that x is between 4.9 and 5.1 is not 0. So in this video, we're going to be paying particular attention to the probability of intervals. That's going to be our main plan of attack. To do this formally, we need to introduce what's known as a probability density function. Instead of using a probability mass function, like for discrete random variables, a probability density function, or PDF, tells us the probability distribution of a continuous random variable. It tells us how likely particular outcomes or intervals are. And it also helps us answer questions like, what's the chance that our leaf is between 4.9 centimeters and 5.1 centimeters long? Specifically, to answer this question, we need to look at the area under the curve. But before we get to that step, let's firstly look at some main overarching features of PDFs. Firstly, f of x is greater than zero for all x. So you can never have a PDF ever go below zero. Essentially, this is because it would suggest an outcome or an interval has a negative probability. And we all know the lowest probability that you can have is zero. Secondly, the area under the whole PDF is one. You'll see more about why this is in a moment. But that's where the sweeping generalizations stop. A PDF is just a positive function whose area underneath is one. It could look like this, or this, or this. And every continuous random variable x has its own PDF. Okay, cool. So how do we relate this back to probability? Well, like I've hinted at already, the area under the PDF in a specific region is the probability that our random variable x is between those variables. So for example, say for a particular random variable x, the PDF looks like this. Then the probability that our random variable x is between 2 and 8 is exactly this area. So formally, the way that we would write that mathematically is like this. That the probability that x is between 2 and 8 is the integral from 2 to 8 of f of x dx. Take note of the fact that we express the probability of x being within an interval using this inequality notation. That's going to come up all the time. Similarly, if we wanted to find the probability that x was between 1 and 2, it'd be this area, which is the integral from 1 to 2 of f of x dx. In general, if we want to find the probability that x is between some values c and d, this is the integral of the probability density function between c and d. Or further, if x is defined only on the interval between a and b, so x can't take a value less than a, and it can't take one greater than b, we could say the probability that x is less than or equal to c is the integral from a to c of f of x dx. Here, the difference is that we're not specifying the lower boundary. It's just the end of our acceptable interval. We're looking for the probability that x can take any value less than c. So just by looking at a PDF, 
we can get an idea of which values our random variable is more likely to take. Where f of x is large, so it's higher above the x-axis than other spots, that tells us our random variable is more likely to take values in and around that neighborhood. Because the area underneath is greater than in places where the PDF is lower. So from this, we could find the mode, the values most likely to occur of a continuous random variable simply by seeing where the PDF is highest. One final point to explain while we're talking integrals is why the area under a PDF equals 1. Essentially, it's because the area under the PDF represents probability, and if you take all the possible outcomes that a variable could be, then their probabilities must add up to 1. I mean, let's say that you took all the possible lengths that a leaf could be. The probability of our leaf being one of those lengths is 1. We have every possibility, of course it has to be one of them, so the probability is 1. So in math speak, if the random variable x can only take values on the interval between a and b, the integral of the probability density function between a and b must be 1. So to recap everything that we've done here, instead of finding the exact probabilities of specific outcomes, like the probability that x is 5, for continuous random variables, we're interested in finding the probability that x lies in a particular interval, like x is between 6 and 8, and we find that probability by computing the area under the PDF between those values. Whew, okay. PDFs, integrals, areas, I'm knackered. Now seems like a pretty good place to take a break. So get up, have a stretch, and when you come back, we'll look at uniform random variables. See you then!